Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Boo. Early in the morning for a Wednesday and we are in the house at what? 8 o'clock? Yeah, I think 8 o'clock in the morning right now. So uh, about an hour early, so caught you a little off guard. Um, I did have some stuff to do today. I got to get out of the house a little earlier, so I wanted to... Um, do my little devo now and get it going so hey here we are we're in we're ready to go and uh, thank you for joining you can always check out the archives at Boalette whoop, 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 over there at the youtube channel and today's not going to be a long one but a very cool one we're in the as you saw in the title right there 3c we're we're on the third part of chapter three of of judges chapter three so that's what C means. It's just, it's just letting you know that we're kind of in the latter stages of the chapter. And I thought I'd save this one for today, um, not skip over it. Even though it's just a, a verse, it's, it's super cool. Um, it says, after Ehud came Shamgar, son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, he too saved Israel. Now, you know, for your understanding of just kind of the book of Judges is you got what we call major judges and then you have minor judges. And really the difference between the major and minor is not their importance in what they're doing. Um, it's major and minor just really because we don't have much information on the minors. So you have major ones that are really uh, spoken of, uh, elaborated on, and then you have these minor judges that are just just kind of a brief mention of them. Um, you know, and that's what we have here in this last verse of the book of Judges. So when you're reading the chapter, you might, you know, go, oh, Othniel. Oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Ehud. Oh, yeah, I remember him. But you might not remember this Shamgar, son of Anath. That might, you might skip over because it's just one verse. And so, you know, sometimes there's a lot of cool things just in one verse too. And, um, <clears throat> and I love this. And the reason why is because the Bible in the book of Judges is kind of talking about a lot of God's sovereign hand and his rulership in Israel, in the land, and how he's kind of dictating things. You know, it never moves away from that idea that God is in control. You hear that a lot, right? God is in control. Well, in the book of Judges, man, it really shows itself strong. Though there's all this action that's going on in the book over hundreds of years, we always get this idea permeated through the whole entire book of God's control, his sovereign hand, in a sense, his care and his administration in the land and with the people of Israel. You know, him being faithful, right? Him showing, showing himself faithful, even though the people constantly go away, right? And isn't that interesting how how the people continually go and worship other deities and, you know, other gods, God still is in their life. You know, God is, you know, slowly, we're going to see God slowly is becoming, you know, kind of stepping back and what we call kind of hiding, you know, uh, so much so that when we get to the book of Israel, God, Israel, uh, Isaiah, I should say, Isaiah calls God the hidden God. <laughs> yeah, he's, where is he, right? Uh, where is he to be found? You know, his, and that's, and that's a part of the, the, the curse that Moses spoke of in Deuteronomy, that there would be this moving away from God, from the people as they continue to go their route. But even though that's true and, and all that's happening, there's always this thread of that God is still there and pursuing and 
He is merciful and long suffering. Just amazing. You know, uh, you know, I remember reading this, you know, when I was 17 years old, um, you know, and I didn't know nothing about the Bible. But what I got away, what I got out of this, these sections was that, man, dude, God is pretty amazing. Um, how many people would stay in a relationship, you know, if the person, if your partner was just not even interested in you? You know, just went, you know, said, hey, I'm going to Las Vegas. Talk to you later. Just totally went and, you know, sowed his wild oats or her wild oats. You know, would you stay in that relationship? I mean, that's super tough to do. And here you see God stays in and stays in and stays in. So this morning, I just think of God being super faithful, man, so, so dead set on doing what he said he would do. And, you know, this morning I think, hey, you know what? God said it. God will complete it. You know, God is faithful and just dwelling on God's faithfulness this morning, man, that, you know, even if I'm faithless, the New Testament says God is faithful. He continues to go. He continues to move in his covenant people. And wow, you know, he is that faithful partner who's always, always there, right? Will never leave you nor forsake you no matter what. Man, that's, and that's powerful. And so you see that that thread throughout the book of Judges really, really strong. You can totally see where the New Testament writers get with their writing, where they get that from. How do they know God's faithful? Well, they know it from his consistency um, to reveal himself to the people of Israel. Of course, most greatly in the person from Nazareth, right? Jesus, who came to reveal the Father. Just when Israel thinks that God is fully away, gone ast- gone away, hidden himself completely from the nation, where is God? Where is God? The cries are, are come out. And what? There's a, a, a baby that is born, right? In Bethlehem, right? The Messiah, right? Jesus says, I have come to reveal, to show you the Father. You know, Jesus is that I love you letter, you know, from the Father to the nation. Powerful, right? Mm, yeah. And and so when I look at verse 33 here and it says, after Ehud came, remember, that was 80 years of peace. 80 years under Ehud. That's a long time, right? And then look at what what happens after 80 years. Another generation comes on the scene, right? Another group of people. And and it says, it's so interesting, Shag, uh, Shamgar. That sounds so weird, right? Doesn't sound very Hebrew. Shamgar, son of Anath. Now, there's, a, there's some things to think about here. And I'll just read a little bit of a my little Bible commentary. It does a good job of just succinctly putting it. But Shamgar, the first of the six minor judges and a contemporary of Deborah. So we're going to see Deborah as being one of the major prophets. His name foreign. So he was probably not an Israelite. Now there's some debate on that, whether this guy was an Israelite or not. Nothing's really conclusive, so we can't really conclusively go any direction. But this commentator notes that, hey, he probably maybe wasn't an Israelite. The son of Anath indicates either that Shamgar came from the town of Beth Anath, which is the house of Anath, um, or that his family worshipped the goddess Anath, since Anath was Baal's sister. So you ever heard of the goddess, the god Baal? Well, this is Baal's sister, 
Anath. <laughs> and uh, she was the goddess of war who fought for Baal, the expression son of Anath, may have been a military title, meaning a warrior. Wow. So there's some interesting things about that we don't really know about, but that could be um, considered when talking about Shamgar, son of Anath. The idea of Anath being a, a deity, um, a a false deity, something that's recorded in other old, old, um, if you will, books, um, old um, um, findings, you know, of archaeology. This idea, this term, this name, Anath, being uh, referenced from the uh, the um, the deity of one of the Canaanite people. You know, this. So you've heard of Baal. Now we have Anath, the sister. Um, and a goddess of war. And the reason why I just keep reiterating that, because if it is, then I would say that's pretty radical <laughs> to have a minor judge come out of that. Um, so it, it is interesting. Um, but regardless of all that, I just find it really fascinating that God uses all kinds of people. Um, you know, he uses the Othniel, who comes from Caleb, you know, remember Caleb's line? Remember that that judge came from from Caleb? You know, he uses that kind of person, you know, and then and then he's using Shamgar, son of Anath. And this is kind of kind of what I think about in my morning Devo is is that, you know, God will use all kinds of people. You know, <laughs> There is no partiality. It's one of the big things, truths that I see in the Bible is there is no partiality with God. No favorites. That's it. You can be saved. Doesn't matter socioeconomic status. Doesn't matter the color of your skin or your eyes. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of rings you have on or what tattoo you got going you know this week doesn't matter what your kicks look like or what you ride doesn't matter the house you're in it doesn't matter any of those things you can be saved just like the most richest person in the world you can be saved this is what Jesus has come to do. Seek and save that which is lost. And what was lost? Humanity. Lost, blind leading the blind. That's what we are in our culture, are we not? Just blind leading the blind. Generation after generation after generation. Just keep the blinders on, man. We can't see. And, you know, man, wow. But all of us can come to Christ. All of us can receive God's mercy in his grace for us. That's right. We can all avoid the separation from God that we deserve, right? The wrath of God that we deserve. You know, we're the ones who break the law. But yet, what a gift. So everybody, no partiality with, with God. Right? Doesn't matter where you're at, where you're from, who you are, anything like that. You can be Shamgar, right? From Anath, whatever that means. You know, maybe it's short for a Hebrew name. It could be. You know, we don't quite know. But we know that it's such, it's one verse, but look at what he did. Struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, a big giant rod. Right? With a sickle on one hand, a pick on the other side. You know, or not a sickle, but a, a like a point, I'm pretty sure, on one side. And then a, a, a kind of a, some uh, a thing on the other side that you could chip away at stuff. So, I mean, it was definitely something, you know, you poked big ox with it. You know, you, you used it as a tool to get dirt out of things. You know, I mean, this big, long thing. Um, look like a javelin or something, but you know, 600 Philistines with an ox goad, man, it sounds like a Samson thing, right? We'll get to him, 
But you can see that, hey, you might think, man, how can God use me? I don't know if God can use me. I, I, I don't look the part. I don't speak the part. I don't this. I don't that. But God can use you. And that's the beautiful thing. Bo, don't limit yourself today. Right? Don't limit myself today. You know, whatever insecurities I feel about myself, I need to bring those things to God and say, hey, God, you can do mighty things through my life. Help me to trust you and your work in me more than me trusting and thinking and dwelling on my own inadequacies, my own utter failures. Let me now think of you and your power and what you're able to accomplish, what you've done in the past and what you can do certainly in my present and in the future. Let me hold fast to that today. Yeah, not get into this whole negativity thing and just looking at all the inadequacies. Man, there's a list to be made of all the inadequacies of our lives. But let's not dwell on those things. We have a God who can move mountains, who does amazing things. And so we need to trust God. You know, God, help me to trust you to do amazing things today, to use me in powerful ways today. Help me not to limit myself today, right? Help me not to get into my own uh, self-loathing, you know, kind of, you know, things. Instead, let me walk by faith, trusting that you can use anybody, you know, to do mighty acts, to do amazing things, to change the world. You know, Shamgar stepped out in faith. He at some point took a step, and that's what we need to do, is just take that step so you know i i pray that that would be the thing you think of today and just when you think of that verse shamgar son of anath wow 600 philistines he did it you know but it was god in him right working in the nation loving the nation raising up those that wanted to be used by god by yahweh Whew, that's cool pep talk, <laughs> you know? It's like, man, right on. You know, God can use me today, and he can use you today too. So you guys have a great one, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>